Hello students. In the previous lecture, uh, we started looking at a couple of instructions in RISC-V that would help us to handle the function calls, right? And um, in the process, we also uh, were discussing about a point on how to handle the parameters. If the number of parameters are less, then we can use the registers uh, to pass the values from the caller to callee. But what happens if we need more number of registers or if we have uh, more data to be communicated across? At that point, we said that uh, what we have is stack, right? Uh, let's uh, look at that aspect in this lecture now. Stack, as the name is quite familiar to you, works like, uh, like a last in first out structure right and uh, you also need know that uh, we need a pointer to the topmost location uh, of the stack and we usually call that top right in the same way uh, that particular pointer here we would refer to it as stack pointer right it would be pointing to the last allocated address in the stack right so what it means is using that particular um, address we can retrieve any of the values which are already in the stack also it or also it would mean that if we need to store any new elements into the stack we would uh, increment the stack pointer appropriately and store the values right so uh, the way we can imagine for the function call is the stack pointer before the function call would be having all the data of that particular caller function right and when the procedure wants to use it it would be uh, incrementing the stack pointer and placing its values uh, and at the moment when it is uh, when the control is coming back to the caller we would need to restore the stack pointer so that the caller function can again uh, retrieve the values from the stack and reuse them okay let's uh, walk through that a uh, little more in detail so in x uh, in uh, a risk v isa register x2 is assigned to be the stack pointer so if the question is, can I use X2 uh, in my regular add, subtract, load, store instructions? Yes, you can. But it would also mean that uh, you would lose the stack pointer. So if you want to use stack in your program, do not uh, disturb uh, the value in X2. Use it as uh, the top you know, pointer uh, for the stack. If we uh, work with uh, X2 and uh, use it for any typical uh, load store or even function calls, right? Uh, the stack pointer will be lost. And there's no way to retrieve it. Right at the uh, beginning, the value of X2 will be having the stack pointer and we need to uh, preserve it for any further use. So keep that in mind whenever you are using the stack. The stack pointer needs to be adjusted by one word or one double word according to the data that we want to put in uh, whenever we are trying to place some data onto the stack or remove some data into the stack. As you already know, placing the data onto the stack is called push and retrieving or removing the data from the stack is called pop. So every time there is a push or a pop, we need to change the stack pointer appropriately, right? Uh, uh, this uh, just to correlate when uh, uh, the very first time you have worked with stack and even uh, when you wanted to implement stack in at the HLL, you would have done this yourself. Something similar we need to do at the assembly also. And to push and pop onto the stack, we can use the regular load and store instructions. Okay, the 
historical convention on how the stack works in the assembly is it will start at the highest memory location allowed and it will grow downwards right typically we would say that uh, when we place five elements in the stack the stack pointer grows from let's say 0 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 right but here it's the other way around stack pointer uh, would be sta uh, starting here to place one element we need to decrement the stack pointer place that element if you want to place another element you will decrement it one more uh, by one more position and place the a new element so on so forth so the stack grows uh, downwards so that uh, from higher addresses to lower addresses that's the way we can interpret it so to push the values like i mentioned the stack pointer is decremented to pop the values we would need to increment the stack pointer so here is one uh, uh, picture of how the stack pointer is right uh, i will talk about the below three or even the dynamic data which is heap a little uh, later but if you look at the stack pointer and if if you imagine this entire box as your uh, main memory the stack pointer will start at the last location of that memory and it will grow towards zero of course it will not towards zero because the other uh, data is also stored okay so even in venus the very first time uh, you look at uh, the the register x2 it will have some value right so that is the stack pointer and you can see that would be the maximum value that venus allows now if the question is uh, where is stack physically located uh, registers as you know are a separate uh, location which is very very close to the uh, it part of the cpu itself they are not part of the memory but that's not the case with stack stack is actually a part of the memory itself we are just viewing it as a logically separate partition right like i said all this entire box is together our uh, main memory or ram whatever you want to call that is the reason we are still able to use the regular load and store instructions to operate on to the stack now let's see how we can use the stack uh, using an example let's say the c code that we want to uh, convert into the assembly code is uh, for a function leaf example right it has four parameters g h i j and its uh, body looks something like this so we have uh, a local variable f and f is calculated as g plus h minus i plus j and the value of f is returned at the end of this function call right let's see how we can convert it into the risk we assembly code let us assume that the values of g h i j are available in registers x 10 11 12 and 13 and the value of f uh, will be in x 20 or we will interpret x 20 as f And uh, let's also assume that we have a couple of temporary registers x5 and x6 at our disposal. The very first thing that we need to do is save the values of x5, x6, and x20 onto the stack before we use them. Right? This is the responsibility of the callee function or the subroutine that we are calling. That whatever registers it wants to use apart from the available registers or the temporary registers if you remember the convention that uh, risk uh, isa uh, specifies anything other than that the callee or the function the procedure that we are calling needs to save so that is the very first uh, thing we would do so let's look at the code so let's say the function call uh, was jl x1 leaf example leaf example is the label and x1 is the return address it means that once this function is executed we will use x1 to return to the caller like i said leaf example is the label so the very first action is to save three values 
each uh, the register values x y x six and x twenty. So what we would do is we decrement the stack pointer by twelve spaces. Now why is it twelve spaces? Each of these registers is thirty two bits, right? It means uh, four bytes, and because memory is byte addressable, each register will take four spaces. So we will reduce by twelve to accommodate three three register values. And we will place uh, x5 first, or uh, and followed by x6 and x20. These x5, x6, x20, these uh, numbers can change, but if you look at the offsets that we are adding to the stack pointer, these should not change. So it should not be like uh, uh, we are using the offset zero here and eight here. That will violate the working of stack itself, right? We will always take the uh, top pointer and whenever we want to place a value we cannot leave any space uh, empty and then fill in, uh, the one top uh, next to it we will go one by one the same thing is happening here we'll place uh, the value in the very first location uh, uh, using the stack pointer that we have begun with, then we will add four to it. We'll get the second, and then we'll add four. So we would get the current stack pointer. Then uh, we are uh, performing the addition using the temporary register x5, and then addition of i and j using the temporary register x6. Then uh, we assume that f will be uh, x20. So that's what. Uh, would be the resultant and now we want to we have moved the value of f into x10 because x10 uh, is one of the conventional register we use for parameter passing excuse me so the caller function will look at x10 and uh, interpret it as f Right, and then uh, now that our actual logic of this particular uh, leaf example function is over, we need to restore the stack pointer. So we uh, load the pre uh, previous values of uh, x20, x6, x5 in that order. So we have loaded it and we restore the stack pointer itself by adding 12. And then we are going to use JLR we use the return address x1 uh, because that's the actual address we the offset would be 0 and x0 because we don't want to save the address of the next instruction following this uh, subroutine so once the control executes jlr here it would return to the caller now if you look at the values of x5 x6 and x20 before the function call and after the function call they are same that is the primary uh, duty of this subroutine to ensure right so keep that in mind whenever you are writing the assembly program typically we do not look at these uh, subtle details when we are working at high level but it's of utmost importance that uh, we do this ourselves at the assembly otherwise the logic uh, will be wrong even though you feel that uh, uh, the uh, the values that you wanted to compute everything is correct but how you are uh, passing the values across the function calls and reusing them will get, will get affected so be conscious sorry cautious whenever you are uh, using these registers so here is uh, the way we can uh, visualize the stack the stack pointer before the function call is somewhere here and we have allotted three spaces so we have decremented it by 12 the stack pointer changes to here and on in the stack using this modified stack pointer we have stored x5 x6 and x20 we have performed all the other uh, uh, all the other logic that the function needs to uh, do then just before the return of the control we restore the stack pointer to its original position so the values of x5 x6 x20 are restored and the stack pointer uh, will be added by 12 
which would be same as what the status is before the function call. So this is how you can imagine the stack would uh, grow and shrink across the function calls. Now let's try to walk through the entire execution of uh, the procedure or the function. Uh, before that, a quick uh, question on should we put everything onto the stack? Should we put all the 31 registers onto the stack? Not necessarily. Uh, one of the standard convention I have already mentioned earlier is uh, uh, x5, x6, x, x7 and x28, 29, 30 and 31. These are all, these are the temporary registers. So as a standard convention, these need not be preserved by the callee. Callee means the procedure itself, right? If the caller wants to uh, reuse the value as x5 before and after the function call, then it is his duty to save that value. But on the other hand, the few other registers, x8, x9, x18, 9, uh, 19 through 27, these are saved registers. Means it is the duty of the callee to preserve these registers across the function call. So uh, this is a standard convention. Uh, <coughs> it is not hard and fast rule to adhere to, but if we look at any standard compiler that is built for RISC VISA, it would definitely follow these uh, suggestions or guidelines, you can say. Right. So uh, I would suggest that you also follow the same thing. If you are using uh, registers X5, X6, X7, then rest or uh, put them onto the stack before the function call and restore them after the function call. But if you are using any registers, any of these registers, do the save and restore part within the function itself. So because the values in these registers are the responsibility of the caller, the values in these registers are the responsibility of callee. This is uh, suggested by the architects to reduce uh, register spilling. Again, uh, a, sh a small note on register spilling. As you know, whenever we want to write something to the memory and retrieve it back, we need to explicitly uh, write the load and store instructions which would increase the program size. And also basically it's just uh, data transfer. We are not working with the data, right? Uh, the, these are not directly helping us to get the operation done. So use these registers uh, cautiously and uh, write your programs. You can write uh, efficient codes with better register usage. With that uh, discussion, let's go back to the instructions that RISC-V provides for uh, the control flow. The first set we saw was uh, branch instructions, which would uh, decide to go to the target location or continue with the sequential instruction based on a condition. And then to handle the function calls, we looked at a couple of uh, uh, special instructions, JAL and JLR, uh, which we call uh, we can call as jump instructions. Now uh, the question uh, or the discussion point can be when do I use branch and when do I use jump? So one straightforward answer is uh, whenever we need to change the control flow based on a condition, then there is no other option but to use a branch instruction. And whenever we want to uh, change the control flow without checking any condition, then we will go for jump. So a quick uh, example is the go to instruction that we can use in C or uh, yeah, no, primarily C, right? You when do when you write go to it can you can imagine it's uh, as if it's getting translated as the jump instruction. Now apart from this. Uh, to avoid confusion, you know, you will come across these uh, terms branch and jump uh, a lot and different ISAs have different way of interpreting this. To avoid any sort of confusion, 
you can uh, visualize a jump as an unconditional branch or the other way to put it is any conditional jump is a branch right in some of the ISAs there are no explicit branch instructions but there are different type of jump instructions uh, some of them depend on a condition and some of them don't so if you look at that instruction set the jumps which are based on a condition are equivalent to the branches that we are currently looking at okay so is this the only uh, decision, uh, fact, uh, deciding factor that if you want to change the control based on a condition, we go for branch. If not, then we should go for jump. So let's see if this is the only thing. To understand that, we need to look at the instruction encoding of the jump instructions, JL and JLR. They follow a different format which is UJ format. Sorry, the JL instruction follows the UJ format. JLR still follows the I format. So in J, uh, JL, the UJ format, we have the opcode, uh, register destination, and we have 20 bits of immediate field, right? So we can have a target, which is almost 2 power 20, uh, 19 spaces above or below. So in a jump, uh, we will have a range of only 12 bits. So if you want to jump to a farther location, then we can use a, a JL instruction. So just like the branch, we have omitted the immediate uh, zero bit to have a, a wider range and because uh, immediate zero is always zero right so if uh, let's say here is an instruction beq x10 x0 and we want we expect it to jump to l1 L, uh, instruction which is labeled as l1 let's say the instruction uh, with label l1 is within the range of 12 bits then probably this beq would still work but what if it is beyond those 12 bits range then you can uh, imagine that it would be something like this we can convert it like this so here the condition is if the values value of x10 is equal to the value of x0 which is 0 then we want to jump to l1 basically if x10 is 0 then we want to jump to l1 so we can convert it some to something like this if the value of x10 is not equal to 0 then jump to a nearby location which is l2 if it is equal to 0 then we would continue with the next SQL instruction which is JL here what JL means is we want to uh, unconditionally jump to the location L1 so this is equivalent to the above code but it could work for larger uh, ranges uh, like I have mentioned JLR uses the I format uh, two register operands and one immediate field now what if we want to jump farther not 12 bits 20 bits uh, but something like 32 bits what would we do then um, we already saw a couple of instructions lui and auipc we can use these branch and jump instructions in combination of the lui and get it working right so and there will be uh, uh, opportunity in the lab experiments to work around this but typically the programs we write will not be so uh, large so we might not uh, use uh, arrive at a, a position that we need to jump beyond uh, 12 bits also but as such the compiler needs to uh, handle larger codes so there it will uh, deploy these uh, kind of small hacks to uh, get it working properly so with that, I will uh, pause the current lecture. Again, um, this the contents of this lecture are also available in section 2.8. In the next lecture, we are going to look at some uh, very interesting concept, uh, which is uh, again dealing with the function calls. But there, the function 
uh, will be calling itself uh, the recursive functions, right? Uh, let's discuss more in that picture. Thank you.